Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So, in a previous video we made sodium nitrate by the reaction of baking soda, which is sodium bicarbonate, with um, ammonium, calcium ammonium nitrate as found in these instant cold packs. Now, that method works well, but it's a bit messy, and I had a difficult time actually getting it to work. Um, it did work in the end, but it was a lot more messy than this method. And I have tried this method before, and this is the method I now use, because it's much easier. So, we're just going to need two ingredients, well, three if you include the water. But um, we're going to need some sodium hydroxide, which can be purchased as lye crystals. I bought that from Home Hardware. And um, this six pounds, I think, was twenty dollars or something. It's really quite cheap. Um, anyhow, the other thing that we're gonna need is some instant cold packs. So um, these are calcium ammonium nitrate instant cold packs. Make sure it says that somewhere on the package somewhere. Um, and it's basically just has some water inside. And when you break it, um, the dissolution of the calcium ammonium nitrate into the water is very endothermic and thus becomes cold. And that's how you get the cold pack. Um, but we're going to be using the calcium ammonium nitrate in a double displacement reaction um, with the sodium hydroxide to produce um, sodium nitrate and ammonia gas. And um, yeah, this should work quite, quite well. And then the water will just help mix the two together so that the reaction can progress. So you need some sort of container to react in. So I have this one liter beaker here. And um, the first thing we're going to do is take all of our cold packs and pour them into that beaker. Now each pack of cold packs is actually $4, um, I purchased those at Walmart, and each cold pack, um, or box, contains two cold packs inside of it. So um, there's lots here for $4, it's quite cheap, and uh, definitely worth it. Sodium nitrate can be used as a potassium nitrate substitute, or be used to make nitric acid. And for my purposes, I'm going to be making nitric acid. Now, if you want to make potassium nitrate instead of sodium nitrate, simply substitute the sodium hydroxide for potassium hydroxide. However, potassium hydroxide is more difficult to find and would probably need to be purchased online. Um, but sodium hydroxide works perfectly fine to make sodium nitrate. Anyhow, I'll open these up, weigh them out, and meet you back. So as can be seen, from those six cold packs, we have 574 grams which um, equates out to approximately 95 grams per cold pack of calcium ammonium nitrate. Now, there is a decent amount of anti-caking agent in here, which simply coats all the beads so that they don't stick together and clump. Um, so we don't actually have 574 grams. I'd probably assume we have somewhere more around 525 grams. Now, the anti-caking agent isn't going to matter too much right now, because when the reaction that we do is finished, we can simply filter it off and we'll be left with a nice clear solution of our sodium nitrate. So if we have 574 grams, um, I'm just going to, instead of bringing it all the way down to uh, 525, we do want to have an excess of sodium hydroxide, uh, but basically we add about half of its weight in sodium hydroxide. So we'll assume we have about 550 grams, um, so that's 275 grams of sodium hydroxide that we will have to add to this. Now, this must be done outside because the reaction between the sodium hydroxide and the calcium ammonium nitrate is extremely exothermic and will generate huge quantities of ammonia gas um, and a lot of heat, of course. Um, so much so that this could perhaps even bubble over, so I might actually stick this inside of a separate pan just in case that does happen because you don't want to be losing a lot of our product. So um, no major reaction should happen at first. But to initiate the reaction, we'll probably take just one of these cold packs of the six and dump it in there. And it looks probably around 50 milliliters of water. It doesn't really matter how much, we just need to get the reaction in initiated. Um, and then a very violent exothermic reaction will occur, generating huge amounts of highly toxic ammonia gas. So this must be done outside. I wouldn't even recommend doing it in a fume hood. I'm not doing it in a fume hood because this is a very violent reaction and will produce huge amounts of ammonia gas. And... As mentioned a moment ago, ammonia gas is highly toxic. Um, anyhow, so we'll under, uh, carry out the reaction, I'll meet you outside, um, and then we'll add the things together and I'll show you the reaction. So, I'll meet you back in a moment. Okay, well I guess there's 50 milliliters in each of those little packets of water, but there's actually 100. So, um, that was just really poor guessing on my part, but um, I just transferred it to a small graduated cylinder. So, uh, there's 100 milliliters of water in there. And in that little bag beside it, I just weighed out exactly 275 grams of sodium hydroxide. So we will begin by pouring the sodium hydroxide on top of our calcium ammonium nitrate in the beaker and not mixing them. Then adding the water, I'll leave the camera running, but I'm going to get out of the way because huge amounts of toxic ammonia gas will be produced. 
now it's inside this bin so that if it overflows hopefully any of the uh, reaction mixture will be caught in the um, container so we can still use them we don't have a huge loss so we'll go ahead we will undo this little packet here and we're going to dump in all of the sodium hydroxide beads Now the reaction here does indeed produce a bit of water, so um, this little bit of water is definitely enough to get the reaction initiated. After that it will be producing its own water which will drive the reaction forward. Immediately, lots of bubbling, I can see ammonia gas being generated, I'm going to get out of here. It's splashing everywhere. And it looks very exothermic. The reaction appears to have slowed down. Um, I might have to stir it up a bit just to get it initiated. I'll be right back. Well, upon the addition of some more water, a violent reaction is now occurring. Just need to add some more. It's a good thing I have a bin around it because it is overflowing and splashing. And uh, definitely stand back. Um, and I can smell the ammonia gas and I'm going to get out of here now. <laughs> Okay, so now that the reaction has died down and appears to be completed, um, one thing that I did do was take everything that had spilled over and pour it back into the beaker so that anything that didn't react could react. So, everything's reacted and there's no more bubbles being released. And um, we have a very, very thick slurry. This is because we use calcium ammonium nitrate and the um, reaction has produced calcium hydroxide which is insoluble in water um, and thus has precipitated out creating the slurry. Um, the other thing is, of course, the anti-caking agent, which is not soluble. Um, however, that's okay, because those things can easily be filtered off, and will be, should be left with a fairly pure solution of sodium nitrate. So, we're going to go ahead, take a filter, and begin to filter this stuff off. Of course, do this outside, the solution still stinks horribly of ammonia gas, and this will not go away. It's going to smell really bad for a long time. Um, we're going to have to evaporate all, off all the water, and thus it will release all the ammonia gas. And um, in the end we'll be left with some nice sodium nitrate crystals. So, I'm going to filter this off outside into a separate container, then I'll meet you back. Okay, so after filtering it off, um, I simply took the solution, which was way over a liter, um, and um, what I did was I boiled it down to about 300 milliliters. Now, with the amount that we used when I boiled it down to 300 milliliters, a good amount of uh, sodium nitrate crystallized out um, as the solubility, there, there was too much to dissolve in that little amount of water. And when I let it cool down, um, there is still liquid in here, but a lot more precipitated out. Anyhow, so we're kind of left with a wet slurry. Now, uh, before I um, boil down more of our liquid to obtain the rest of the sodium nitrate, I want to get out as much of this sodium nitrate as possible. Remember, if sodium nitrate is heated too hot, it will start to decompose, and we don't want it to decompose. So, to prevent the sodium nitrate from decomposing, we could filter this off, so that with the rest of the solution, um, when we boil it down, we're not going to start burning this sodium nitrate that's already here. So, I'm going to do another quick filtration, then continue to boil down the remainder of the solution. Okay, so after taking all of that sodium nitrate, boiling it down, filtering it out, and then drying it in the oven, you can see it's all been transferred to this container here. Now when I dried it in the oven, I made sure to keep the temperature at 150 deg uh, degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not sure what that uh, transfers into in Celsius, but um, it's definitely below 100 degrees Celsius. As uh, sodium nitrate actually has a fairly high decomposition point, but um, last time I made sodium nitrate, even heating it up, uh, I think it was about 150 degrees Celsius, it turned brown but because it was decomposing into a bit of nitrogen dioxide, which uh, tainted its color. So if you're going to dry it, take the extra time and keep the temperature low so that um, your sodium nitrate doesn't become quite impure. And as you can see, we have a lot of really beautiful, nice sodium nitrate now. So. This uh, jar I pre-weighed weighs um, 400 grams exactly. So I'll turn on the scale here. We'll see how much it weighs. So, let's see, 753 grams, which means we have about 353 grams. So just under a pound of sodium nitrate from that. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, and sodium nitrate is extremely useful. It could be used to make um, smoke bombs as a potassium nitrate alternative um, or to make things like nitric acid, which is an extremely useful chemical. 
Um, now, sodium nitrate is hygroscopic, which means it absorbs water out of the air. Um, and this isn't exactly the best thing. Potassium nitrate is much better for reactions like smoke bombs because the no, well, no water in your reaction is going to greatly increase the reaction rate. If you're going to use this to mix with sugar and make smoke, you're definitely going to want to dry your potassium nitrate before you do that. If you're making nitric acid with it, wet potassium, or sorry, um, sodium nitrate. If you're just going to make um, nitric acid with it, don't worry. Sodium nitrate will be fine if it's wet. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to be using this to make more nitric acid. Sodium nitrate is extremely easy to make, a very useful chemical, and uh, that's basically how to make it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in a future video. Wait, bye.